Kirstie, and I'm here um, to discuss a little bit about working with folks who are neurodivergent and neurocomplex as learners. Um, I recently gave a lecture at the University of New Mexico in Taos to our faculty team about something that I had noticed in a pattern over the last 18 years of teaching full-time at the university in the field of body work and movement therapies. And what I noticed is that I had a higher percentage than the average population of students who were neurodivergent and on the spectrum. As a result, I've developed a lot of ways of teaching that holds more space for these particular populations. And also as somebody who identifies as being neurocomplex, um, which was mirrored basically by my students, um, I became more interested in this as also understanding how I am as a learner and what kind of accommodations or not even really necessarily accommodations, but just reframes and different kinds of methods and um, activity towards different material. What we know right now is often 50 to 20% of the population is neurodivergent which includes up to 10% of people with dyslexia, 6% with dyspraxia, and 5% with ADHD, and about 1% to 2% on the autism spectrum. Other neurodiverse conditions include dyscalculia and Tourette's syndrome and a lot more. Um, I'm going to ask that you peek at this slide on the right. The image I put together has a whole bunch of other types of neurodivergencies, and the list is much longer than what I'm presenting right here. So what I became interested in is what do we need to do to help support these folks and what kinds of modifications in the classroom. And one of them does happen to be how we put our PowerPoints together. Um, sometimes I'll attend a conference and the PowerPoint will be um, like just black and white or really sparing or not have beautiful colors or imagery. And I find that for my neurodivergent brain, I really like different kinds of images to come forth. Who are the neurodivergent and neurocomplex folks? And one of the things that I like to think about in neurocomplexity is if we're all sitting around a campfire, it takes a whole bunch of different types of people to make a village or a community. And the neurodivergent folks are often think outside the box um, or they might not even know there is a box. Um, that's how meta they may get. Um, gifted folks also fall on the neural complexity spectrum. And often people do prefer to have um, person-centered language. So I'm a person who is neurocomplex. might be one way for me to put that. If you're familiar with the Harry Potter umbrella, um, Harry Potter in the School of Wizardry, um, they received their letters and they lived in households with muggles. So there was a difference of way of seeing things. And then they got their secret letter and had to go to the platform of 93 quarters, which, you know, a normal neurotypical or a muggle wouldn't see. So when I'm speaking about folks on the neuro who are neurocomplex or neurodivergent, um, we are really speaking about these folks that don't operate the same in the world as other folks do. And you may say something to them or present something which may feel to you if you're neurotypical as being um, evidently clear or um, offering something that is, yeah, just basically for you, it seems easy. Um, but for us, we might start breaking it apart and jump into systems analysis and start questioning the origin of what you're saying and breaking it down and also looking at other ways of expressing that. And so we need more time. Our brain is going to be more securitous in how it maps things 
and we're looking kind of from the back door, the back down the alleyway, across the street. We're really trying to expand our understanding of something and understand it thoroughly before we come to a conclusion or ask more questions. And so we need more time. Um, it's pretty common for those of us in the neurocomplex, neurodivergent world to recognize that we have a slower processing speed because we're doing that circuitous mapping and we have more synapses. Um, they have shown in autistic studies that um, there is less pruning of the synaptic neurons in the brain from birth into growing up. So we literally have more neuronal firing going on in any moment. And part of what I'm doing in the somatic touch class is to kind of dive into more of the history and detail behind this and how we might support somebody through somatic touch in that paradigm. Um, examples in the classroom might be modifying um, noise, like when there's crosstalk where other students are talking and having their own conversations or like in a meeting and business, that level of crosstalk can be quite disruptive to the neurodivergent brain because we're like, oh, what's going on over there? We start putting our ear on the other side of the classroom. So that's one example of many things um, to offer modifications. Have a beautiful day. Thank you.